Hey folks, Creedmoor Fury here. Today's video, I want to talk about how I make mushroom tea. A uh, little discussion about why I use mushroom tea, why I think it's necessary to put in your Eden Grows or your Deep Mulch Grows, and the benefits that I see to using it, and the benefits that I've seen in my own gardens and the gardens of others. Uh, most of you know that uh, having a strong uh, culture, a wide diversity of cultures, of mycelia and mushrooms within your garden or around your garden is going to be beneficial for just the simple act of uh, decomposing soil matter and decomposing wood chips. Uh, it's long known that uh, mycelia and mushroom cultures do break down wood chips. It's one of their favorite foods and uh, it shouldn't be expected to be any different within your Eden Grows. Uh, we like to cover our gardens with wood chips for numerous reasons and uh, more often than not a lot of new and unsuspecting growers do exactly as they've been uh, they've been instructed to do by covering their soils with maybe some compost and then going over the top of that with some wood chips to uh, to add some uh, weed seed germination resistance and to help maintain soil moistures better and to give them an opportunity to hopefully grow a productive crop only to find out later on after they've been uh, already several months into the process and have some cover down and have some plants and they discover that their plants really aren't thriving the way they thought they would. Um, my, my answer to this is that these new gardens, these new lays, these new covers that have been used, um, they're being freshly reassociated with the earth and the soil biome that's within the earth, it's not quite ready to handle all of that. It's an inundation, so to speak. Um, what needs to happen for new garden lays, new covers, is they need to become well acquainted with, well, every season's soil microbes, for instance. They need to be acquainted with every season's um, airborne and atmospheric mycology. There's fungi in the air around us. There's spores everywhere. Every ounce of air we breathe has these things in it. Uh, leaving a garden just to sit will eventually expose it to as much exposure as it can get in the time that you allotted for it. So if it's been sitting there for six months from the fall to the spring and then you started planting, well it's really only been exposed to maybe some winter and a little bit of spring. That's not enough trips around the sun to really do it the natural way. So what do you do when you haven't taken enough trips around the sun to do it the natural way? You still want to grow, you still want to plant, you made this huge effort, you want to get plants growing in the ground. Well, my answer to that is, make some mushroom tea. Making mushroom tea is a great way to deliver uh, mycological, mycological, microbiological, I don't know how you want to say that, I'm not even sure what the right way to say it is, but it's a great way to introduce those types of fungi to your growing areas and the introduction of these fungi to your growing areas is only going to be beneficial. Uh, my experience shows that the more of these cultures that we have, the easier it is to find a balance. There are thousands of mycological cultures out there and as such they all have a job, they all have a reason for being, and they're all trying to procreate, they're all trying to reproduce, they're all trying to do the same exact thing as what we want them to do in our garden. Break down the wood chips, fractionalize it into just the smallest little components we can get, because plants love to take nutrients from very small media. Hmm. That's why so many people thought that plants like to take nutrients from dirt and rocks and minerals for so long. But I'm here to tell you, they like to take it from their own matter even more. So, as such, that little layer that's developing above the dirt, just above your clay, even, it may be there now, there could be a half inch or an inch of it. That's the layer we're after and that's the layer the plants are after. We want to exploit that. We want to develop that. We want to enrich that. We want to embellish that any way we can. We want to add to it the articles that nature would naturally add to it. And she does naturally add N, P, and K, and all kinds of other nutrients and minerals. She does so every single day, because all of that stuff is in the air around us, it's in the soils beneath our feet, it's in the dust that blows around. So now we put a bunch of cover on the ground, we got some stalled plant growth, poor development, no fruit development, our tomatoes look sad and sickly, and probably because they are. The sicker they get, the more little signs they give off to the creatures around them, and those signs, 
the little signs that say, come eat me, come defoliate me, come get rid of all this vegetative growth, slow me down, um, help me die. It's what plants do. They've evolved to do this. They've evolved to behave this way. And insects have evolved to respond to those signs. So if you're seeing more insects in your garden because your garden isn't that healthy right now, that's why. If you want to improve the health of your garden, let's get the soil broken down the way it's supposed to. Let's let Mother Nature be involved in breaking those soils down, and let's start to understand that the soils will almost always reside above the dirt. Hmm. Red clay doesn't drain very well, but the soils above it that you're making will. They will drain beautifully. They will also hold moisture, especially if you do the right thing in how and where you rest your garden, and how and where you lay your garden and how and where you lay your raised beds, or however you fix the media into place. To do so with a little bit of slope underneath it is always beneficial. It allows heavy rains to wash away, but it allows light rains to perk in and continuous rains to saturate the dirt below. It creates a moisture bank that will continue to do exactly what is necessary. Feed and pay it back all in due time, especially when there's not much moisture coming from the atmosphere above. So what we do here with this mushroom tea thing is we take a new garden that doesn't have anything growing in it the way we would like to see it grow. It's stunted. It's telling us, I need help. I need some kind of help to break the soil down, and I need some kind of help to introduce life to the soil. We know that planting seeds asks the soil for life, but when the life isn't present, it's beneficial for us to add it. So in today's video, I'm going to show you the simple steps, and we're going to discuss this a little bit, what I do, and how I go ahead and make a mushroom tea with white mushrooms that I've got behind me on the table. In another video installment, we'll talk about how I make another type of tea, um, compost tea. In my case, it's not really a compost tea. It's more of a nutrient blend tea with nutrients that I have taken in that I normally use in dry form in my garden and in my soils, but in this particular instance what I want to do is I want to take them and I want to put them in aerated water and I want to make a soluble blend that can be paid out in a liquid fashion like one of my little ortho sprayers that I like to use. I'm going to be able to put a certain amount in that and then I can actually ration it out to the different areas in my garden. Not every area in my garden has perennial plants. Not every area has developed plants, developed annulars. Not every area is beyond seeding. In some cases, I have seed plants, small, tiny plants that I don't want to be inundating with copious amounts of NPK or any other type of nutrient for that matter. I want it to come up and ask for its needs to be fulfilled by me. And then in turn and in response to that, I will give it the ratio it needs and it requires, rather than blanket feeding the whole entire area with copium, copious amounts of N, P, and K and other minerals, um, I'm going to give each plant zone what it needs to live. Nothing more, nothing less. It's easy to do. It doesn't take a lot. I can normally make five gallons of mushroom tea to cover all of my wood chip piles. I cover it down low scrape back a section about 16 inch off the ground, I pour it on there, cover it with plastic, it develops. As the pile cools down, the mycelia starts to strand and grow underneath. So anyway, that's a subject for another video, but back to the initial concept here, we're going to take a five gallon pail, we're going to inoculate, or I should say re-inoculate my main garden, we're going to take part of another pail, and we're going to inoculate part of my new garden, because it's a bit behind. And I've got a couple of things that are present, some inclusions in that garden that I'd like to get rid of. I'd like to create a better mycological balance and a better bacteriological balance as well. So through the use of these two teas, that's what we're going to do. It's worked in the past on all of my other garden ventures. I don't expect it to stop working anytime soon. I do expect the environment to change as the season moves on and it cools off gets a little bit harder to do some of these things in the times where it's really, really cold at night. So I'm going to take advantage of, advantage of the humidity. I'm going to take advantage of the slightly cooler nights. We're not cold. It's July. If I look over the computer, I think it's telling me it's July 21st. So um, that being said, I've got plenty of summer left here in the Piedmont area of North Carolina, east of Eden. We know it's nice and hot this time of year. Do we get rain? Do we not get rain? Doesn't matter. 
because I'm going to make these in liquid form. They're going to go into the soils. They're going to quench. They're going to drench. They're going to treat everything around the root zone. They're going to make my plants happy. We'll see it in videos in the future. I'll show it every chance I get. Continue to come back here to see more stuff, and that's about what you can expect. So without further ado, I like to say I'm going to go over here to my table, and I'm going to show you all. I've got two packs of these white mushrooms. Um, my wife bought them for me because she knew what I was doing, she knew what I needed, and my gal always gets the right thing. So they come in these packages like this. You really, all you have to do is open them up. Everything's at room temperature. Right below at my feet right here, I have two pails that I cleaned outside. They're just five gallon buckets. There's clear water, non-chlorinated water. We don't want to use chlorinated water. I am using well water, so well water works fine for this. It has in the past, it will in the future. And all I'm going to do is basically take these and cut them up into little pieces and then I'm going to drop them in the water. So one container to each pail. Each pail has about three gallons of water in it and they're going to sit for two days. The spores will come out of the fruited body. They will enter the water and then the water will keep them hydrated. At that point, one pail will get distributed over the main garden, like I said, and then I'll share the other one about. Um, if I do feel the need to, I might make up another couple of batches in the next coming weeks because I've got some chips that are just about ready to be inoculated with my favorite type of mushroom. But in this case, we're using a store-bought mushroom. You don't have to buy them from the store. You can actually go out and find them in, well, on the ground, on trees. You can find them all over the place. Wild mushrooms work too. They're already there. I don't select the wild mushrooms because I'd really like it if maybe these guys did produce a mushroom in my garden and just be another food source. So I do kind of like doing it this way. So anyway, we're going to do a little slicing and a little dicing. I'm going to pour it into here. Y'all will get to see some pictures at the end of the video. And then hopefully uh, I'll include a video of me inoculating some wood piles and inoculating the garden. And um, that'll cover the whole entire subject. basically just slice them up. They'll get wet, they'll get saturated, they'll drop spores. Um, it's kind of widely understood that when a fruited body goes through a change in its environment, namely in this case from uh, dry or just moist to very wet, say 100% humidity or ongoing precipitation, the bottom of the fruited body has a location where there are spores held in place. Those spores will begin to drop with the intent of landing in the water and being carried to um, to reseed the mushroom in other locations. Anyway, that's what it looks like. I have already put one of those little containers of mushrooms into one of the pails and the other pail will get the other one after which they'll just sit and remain in this state. I'll cover them with a cloth and they'll drop as many spores as they'd like to. I might give it a little stir at one point just to kind of make sure they all stay really really wet and that's about it. Not a whole lot more needs to be done really by tomorrow. This time tomorrow there'll be billions of spores in that solution. I usually give it an extra day uh, just because I want to make sure that I'm you know not selling myself short and that's about it, you know. And then this stuff is just going to end up being poured out onto the chips, out into piles of chips, and then being covered. And, and not much more has to happen. The solution will enter the wood chips that are already on the ground. It'll be sucked up into the wood chips where the uh, mushroom spores will do their job to do exactly what they do, what they do best. Break things down, make nutrients available, and share this exchange of nutrients with plants.